All right, National Hill Climb Championships is this weekend and we have a preview. So we're gonna go through the men's, then the women's, and we're also gonna look at the climb. So anyway, this year, for the first time ever, there's this thing called spin data, which allows, like, you can basically rank everyone. So it's quite easy to see who's going well, who's not going well, and it's quite easy to see uh, across the results who's who's doing well, um, like, you know, head-to-head -head stuff. So anyway, this is the ranking. Basically, it ranks you according to how well you do at hill climbs based on who turns up and the timing differences. So A1 is like the best, and then it goes down to A20, and then B1, and et cetera, et cetera. So Tom Bell is ranked number one, A1, then Feather, Andrew Nichols, Cam Brown, Adam Kenway. Thing is with this is it's all well and good. However, there's some big caveats of that hill climbs aren't a standard like, you know, if you're good at one minute hill climbs, you might not be good at 20 minute hill climbs. But anyway, so I'm gonna pick some names and go through some people who I think are gonna win, um, both on the men's and the women's. So I'm gonna start with the men's and then go over to the women's. So first of all, we're gonna have a look at Tom Bell, I guess, or maybe we'll have a look at the climb first anyway. Um, yeah, let's have a look at the climb. So the, this is the, actually the climb here. Um, it is 900 meters at 15%, very, very steep, pretty short, uh, and is definitely gonna suit watts per kilo over pure watts, um, but it's definitely also someone who's good at the punch. So we look at Tom Bell, uh, he's basically won all of his hill climbs unless Andrew Feather's turned up, and I think he's finished second to him twice. So outrageous start. Andrew Feather has also won almost every single hill climb he's done, apart from the one that was there, Tom Bell turns up. So yeah, like, all in all, both of these two absolute favorites. And then if we look further down as well, you've got Andy Nichols who's ranked third. He's also won a lot of hill climbs, but hasn't won all of them. Ed Laverick was national champion, and we're gonna have a look at him uh, just to see how well he's gonna go. Uh, and then the women's, uh, oh, actually no, not sorry, this is all men's. Um, and then Josh Aiken has had a very good season as well, won a fair few, I'm gonna look at his data. And then on the women's side, I think for me personally, I think it's a bit, different there's I think well I think it's the same with the men's there's really only like two or three people who can win it and I think the women's is gonna be Mary Wilkinson defending national champion Beecher Jones and Illy Gardner and we're gonna go look at their data and all the rest of it in a minute but first we're gonna go to the men's so this is the segment this is Tom Bell so I think first of all we're gonna go look at the numbers themselves and then we're gonna go look at positions so the first thing to say is that Tom Bell's numbers are like half what per kilo worse than Andrew Feather, even though they finish on the same time. So this is like the Rippenden or whatever it was called. Oh no, sorry, this is Nico Pendle. And uh, he did about 8.3, 8.5 watts per kilo. Um, and then if we look at like Andrew Feather did significantly more watts per kilo um, or, or are bound, oh no, about the same actually on this particular one. Uh, but did lose, but still did more, but lost, even though he's doing more power. So I think in that sense, we have to take Andrew Feller's power data with a little bit of pinch of salt because it doesn't always uh, add up. And if we look at this climb as well, this was the day before in Rippenden, Tom Bell did eight and a half watts per kilo and Andrew Feather did nine watts per kilo and they finished more or less the same time. Uh, and you'd expect Feather to go faster because he's doing more power. So what can we conclude from this? When it's a 24K an hour climb, so at 10%, um, Andrew Feather does seem to have the advantage over Tom Bell. However, the next day when it was steeper, like 12%, uh, Tom Bell definitely had the advantage. So that is an interesting thing to take into account because obviously we're talking about a very steep climb, which therefore would suggest that Tom Bell would do, go better. Um, so that is, I guess, the first major takeaway is that you'd expect with a steeper climb, Tom Bell probably does have the advantage over Feather based on our previous data. We can then look at uh, bank, uh, sorry, the rake, which is good to compare to other people and why I think Tom Bell and Andrew Feather are really the only people who matter. So Tom Bell won the rake with 9.2 watts per kilo for two minutes. And if we look on spin data, if we look, um, Andrew, uh, sorry, Andy Nichols finished second, like 221, and Tom Bell was like 218. So three seconds on a two minute climb, I think, and you think Tom Bell is definitely better at the longer climbs. I think you can safely say that Andy Nichols probably won't be competing for the win. Um, and I think it will be between them two, so we can get rid of him. We can then have Ed Laverick, who I guess is very good, but again, on the short stuff, not as good. And I think 14th at um, Rake, I haven't watched the video, maybe there's something went wrong, but I think you can still safely say that it's probably gonna be unlikely. We did have a look at his latest numbers. So he did th three and a half minutes at 8.1 watts per kilo, which is obviously outrageous. But then if you think like Feather and them not doing eight and a half to nine watts per kilo. So again, I think, he Laverick could get very close. He's very good at tapering. So in 2019, when he won, he did 7.2 watts per kilo for six minutes. And then the next week he did 7.2 watts per kilo for 12 minutes. So 
I think in that sense, I would trust that Laverick's tapering strategy is very good. Andrew Feather has won twice, so you're like, his tapering strategy is good. And Tom Bell, I mean, he's Tom Bell, he's a machine on the bike, so you also think his tapering strategy is quite good as well. So all three of them, in that sense, you could suggest may do very well. But if I was gonna back one, which I am, I think it's gonna be Tom Bell this year, uh, based on just how well he did last year, and it was a climb that didn't suit him. Uh, he's done very well on steep climbs. He's actually got the com on the win it's passed, which I know is, is irrelevant because, you know, it was all different days, but, you know, this is the sort of times, 309, I don't think it's gonna get much quicker. It depends on the wind, really. At the moment, the wind looks sort of like crosswind, maybe, but uh, anyway, yeah, 462 watts, about eight and a half watts per kilo, or Tom Bell, uh, or 8.2, but I think it'll do eight and a half on the day um, on his power meter, which may equivalent to nine watts per kilo on feathers, but they'll be very close, so it's good and exciting to see. Uh, and it's also good, there's split um, chip timing. Now we go over to the women's. The women's is a little bit more interesting because a lot of them don't seem to post power data. So there's a lot more in head to heads and all the rest of it. Um, so anyway, I think, first of all, we're gonna go over to some people who do a power meter data and then we're gonna go look at some other people in a minute. So Illy Gardner, again, I'm not sure how accurate her power data is because like she's done more, way more what's beginning than me and I've been her before and way less what's beginning. So maybe her power meter overreads or her weight's different. I'm not 100% sure, but if she's doing 7.7 .7 watts per kilo, for three minutes 20. She's gonna bin everyone, but I'm not 100% sure that's correct. But anyway, she did get a course record on Belmont. Very, very strong um, rider, to be fair. Um, and if we look on spin data, um, has got some good. The only annoying thing with spin data uh, is that for a lot of them, they don't have like women's difference. So like they, on Belmont, she obviously won the women's and is first, but on a lot of the other ones, she won't be, as the same with everyone else. Um, but even so, like she hasn't come outside the top 10, including men the whole year, which is outrageous. Um, so in that sense, I think there's a real high chance of her doing very well. The only issue, I guess, is she hasn't raced since the 9th of October on hill climbs, or she's doing road nationals and stuff, so fair enough. Um, probably in good condition, but again, hard to tell. Um, then we go Beecha Jones, just on um, on spin data. Again, some strong results. One Newbury, I think she won that, and then also won um, Teams Winning Cycles, won those, and Streetly won as well. Um, so if we look again at, at her data, um, oh sorry, that's the wrong one, where am I going? Uh, yeah, uh, if we look at her data from early on, we saw about six watts per kilo for four minutes, which is like very, very strong. Um, and then Swindon again was like 6.7 for two minutes 40, which again is very, very strong. We also have Kate McTeer as well, who is sort of an unknown in hill climb sometimes because, well, she's obviously finished on the podium, but like, I feel, um, is sort of building into it. Could go well, could not go well. She got the quam up yesterday at Belmont, which is quite a big one. Um, unseated Illy Gardner when she did an effort up there. So that was quite good. And um, was only like a little bit slower than Illy Gardner's time. Well, like seven seconds maybe. Slower than Illy Gardner's time on like the actual hill climb segment. And this was just in training. So you think in that sense, maybe they'll be close. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but definitely want to keep, keep up your eyes out. I think Kate finished like top 10 last year or something. So fair play. And then if we look at like Mary uh, Wilkinson, Mary Wilkinson did get binned by Beecher on a shorter climb, Monsell, which I guess you could argue maybe suits her better uh, than a longer climb. Uh, but then Mary Wilkinson has won like the rake and all the rest of them. Again, I don't really know why she didn't have Palmy a day. I'm pretty sure she did, but anyway, it seems to have disappeared. Uh, but on the rake, uh, pretty strong time, finished well overall, to be honest. So again, the women's is also very hard to choose uh, and it's also harder because there's not too much power data to go on so you can't really compare, you can only really compare head to heads. Um, and if we look at like head to heads, there haven't been too many um, in some regards. Like there have been a bit with Iligana like doing Chippenham District and then, actually no, maybe they haven't raced each other. Like I don't think they have and then it's just a bit like confusing. Oh no, they did like ninth there, Iligana finished um, seventh. So what was that? Like four seconds in between them on a longer climb. So again, hard to say. And Mary Wilkinson, like she raced in uh, the the rake. No, not the rake, sorry. Um, Monsell, however, got beaten by Beecher, but it's such a short climb, I'm not sure how well it is. So the in conclusion, for the women, it's a lot harder to decide who I think is gonna win. Uh, personally, I think it's probably gonna be Illy Gardner just because it's an outrageously steep climb. And for the women, it's gonna be maybe like close to four minutes, probably still, I'd say like 345, 350 maybe. So like, in that sense, I think that length of climb definitely suits Illy Garner probably a bit better than Beecher. Um, and a Merrill concern again, probably very close as well. So I think it's gonna be really close, both on the men's and women's. I think it's gonna be really exciting. It's gonna be a rowdy crowd. Um, I'm gonna be there 
probably getting a very mediocre result. But anyway, that's a, that's that's beyond the point. Uh, but it's going to be rowdy, and I'm excited to do it. Um, and excited to see everyone's results. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy the vid, uh, and we'll see you in the next one.